that, yeah. that's that's Paul in the fl- his compu- his his pewter died. <laughs> My new pewter. I'm so happy. Okay, I fine. Show me your new computer. Fine, fine. Oh Go ahead. God. So like Paul, a find a new computer to join us, join the session again. Yep, yep, literally. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably gonna be like a laptop or something. It's a long no, time no. to find a new computer. It's Woo! an out of box job, but you nice. know, I've got an AIO on it, and there's a, a NVIDIA 3080 in there or whatever, so I get some graphics and stuff. 3080, okay. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're going to town, baby. Yeah, yeah. I get like all the fancy like LED stuff, but I'm not so keen <laughs> on all of that, to be honest. I prefer like understated color, if you know what I mean. Do, do you think Do you think 3080 will be enough to run your your crappy code? <laughs> <laughs> nah, probably not. It runs on Microsoft infrastructure after all. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, okay, all right, all right. Sam, suit. How are you, brother? Um, so so. Why? What happened? New kid that's pissing you off. Is that what it is? <laughs> Yes, I can relate to that. So, so, Paul, just so you understand, when I say new kid, it basically means, you know, a new intern or a new employee on the block. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> not, I not that wrong way. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Sam. No, Sam. Sam loves, loves his daughter. Oh, you know, I wish I can be a good father like that. Sam is good. I, I like Sam. Okay, Sam, we're going to talk a little bit about... You know what? You know what they call it. Oh, data Neo. You know what you say, Paul? Have you been keeping up? Do you know how far we went? We can now convert things to expressions. Like yeah, eight. I saw you were making some really good progress with the uh, the Roslyn APIs, um, and I've been kicking myself because I keep missing the sessions because you've been doing them at different times of day lately. He he uh, is driving me crazy. Do you know I've been chasing him for like two days now, and I'm like, <laughs> Sam, is it now? He's like, Oh, four o'clock. And then four o'clock comes and he's offline. He's just out. He like he just bailed on me completely. I'm like, what kind of nonsense is this? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not about this life. I'm out. <laughs> Please come <Yeah>. back. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what happened to Joe. He kind of, you know, he he sent me a message that he was gonna travel. I I know that he's traveling because we're connected on Facebook, you know, and then. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I haven't heard from Casper since. Yeah. What was his name? Nick? Nick. Nick, yeah. Yeah, that's Casper's name, right? Why did they call yeah, him yeah. Casper? His, his roommates? Because he was too white. Something like that. So they called him Casper. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's literally, that's what he said. Go back to the sessions. I, I didn't make this up. Anyway, so Paul, you're getting a new computer. I'm also getting a new monitor. You see that monitor behind me? Nice. They made they, they made one that's two of them merged together. Do you know, it's really been bugging me that these ultra wides uh-huh. they're they're only 1440p high, but they're like 4K wide. And on uh-huh. my desk, I've got a pair of 4K regular okay. aspect ratio screens. I want them okay. to do like a dual 4K resolution long. That's- like, that's what I'm wide. okay. That's what I'm getting. Okay, oh, so man, if, if that's a thing now, look, I'm in. I want Samsung one. Odyssey Arc. Watch this. Oh, it's, it's too big though. What you're offline? Yeah. 25 it's like 55 feet. inch or something, Incredible. isn't it? It's 55, it's 4K. Look, it's two of them on top of each other. Yeah, so that's one screen, but it's 4K resolution, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm talking about a 4K screen next to a 4K screen, all in ah. that one panel. Ah, now you're dreaming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the thing is, right, yeah. like we've got the technology to put 4K pixels in like a phone screen, right? Yeah. How hard would it be to put it in something like that? Yeah. And that then guy support... right there. There's your 4K. Whoop. Just like yeah, that. Exactly. See? Yep. Yeah. And then and then just support like dual input. Because like most people that are like like I do, like professional work for programming, you tend to have as many pixels as you can get hold of, right? Because you yep. always need them. But then like even for things like gaming or streaming or whatever, you yep. only game on one screen. So you need something that's high quality, high performance, you know, for 
4K resolution for when you're gaming, but then you need yep. the spare screen to do whatever else you're doing on it. So supporting like dual input, but still having the number of pixels, that's yep. where I'm at. And I've been begging for that for so long. And they just they just seem to be re-bringing out these like 1440p resolution screens or just making them bigger and going, see, it's even better now because it's bigger. And it's like, no. It's America. No, bigger is better. Want bigger. <laughs> don't want bigger. -er. <laughs> bigger. -er. I don't want bigger. -er. I want wider. -er. I want pixels. I need pixels. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm... Paul. I could talk to Paul all day. I literally have like a five-hour session with this guy. So, yes. no, I'm not gonna we, let you. We actually we need to do an update on that project. Let's do um, it. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're getting to the point now where the, the stuff that we talked about. Did you violate realize... the standard? Yeah. The, the, so that the. <laughs> oh, oh cool, of course. Is over. <laughs> <laughs> you... Why would I stick to the standard after a five-hour discussion? But no. <laughs> So, yeah, we, we did find some stuff that, like, you hadn't documented in the standard. So we yeah. had to figure out our own solutions for that. And um, what I'd like to do, actually, is have, like, a conf call with, like, you, me, and uh, um, Callum, my, my junior guy. Um, yeah. Because I think him. that we've come up with some, like, really good, like, solutions to some of the things that are just, like, real edge case or, like, not covered or we felt weren't covered in the standard. Let's go. He, he bought your book, by the way. And I know he every did. Day, I, I told every him day, I get Hassan said this in his book, and I'm like, okay, you know, let's you do know, it Hassan's way. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something. I told him, why did you do that? You could just tell me because they give us these. Um, they give us like if you're the author, they give it to you at half price. Nice, right? And I, if I can send it all the way to Germany to this guy Mabruk, you know, I can send it over to you. You're closer to the U.S. than than Germany, dude. So the guy even like. Like Mabruk, just to make things fun, they have in German, they have this thing called SZ. It's like a, it's a B letter, but it's right. basically SS. Yeah, it, you pronounce it like a double S, don't you? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? Let, let me just do this. Paul, share share notepad on your screen, just real quick. Oh, I'll, show sure. you some, I'll show you something. I had, to, I, I had to hack this. I had to figure out a way to make the guy at the UPS type SZ in his and i think i'm spelling it also pronouncing it wrong but just share your i'll show you something it's gonna blow your mind oh man hang on uh share screen yeah. uh blah, 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 blah. oh god i'm getting loads of questions don't show these tips again and uh, here we go window notepad yeah just just notepad okay here we go okay zoom in just run the wheel of the mouse zoom in a little bit because this is okay now do this do this do you do you, you see your your numpad on the right yeah. side, right? Yeah. Do Alt in your keyboard and then do zero one two. Nothing. Oh, what about? Oh, do you need num lock on? Yes, that that would be a a good idea, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You're not typing. No, it's not doing anything. Paul is using different keyboard. Oh, hang on. Look, I've got some Chinese. Oh, Chinese. Look at this. See? Yeah, so that's that's um a, a Unicode character, yep. right? Yep. So, so what you're I doing is you're typing in the the code in right. Unicode. Right. Yeah. You can so do that with I, any character. Literally any character. And yeah. I showed that to the UPS guy, and he looked at me like I discovered fire. He's like, what? I learned something new today. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's the only way i'm gonna get you to put these because because the unicode the letters the symbols are already loaded on your machine you just need to kind of do the right code for it i did not know that's how you can get to them so you know? did you know that that's how char sets work oh really yeah uh, so basically what it does is you have the base unicode set yep. and all your char sets are regional conversions for those automatically keyed into a key on your keyboard basically so where you get regional keyboards like yeah. American keyboards are all wrong. Like the the double quotes and the at sign are like around the wrong way and stuff. It's like QWERTY, really weird. QWERTY two and QWERTY one and you know I don't know man. Yeah. I, I I know even crazier things like on this. But, um, but okay. So now that you typed this and that was not intentional. By the way, that that was a random number that I gave you. I really honestly swear God didn't select this. Sam, what does this word mean? Uh, this word, this Chinese character, it has a, a lot of meanings. 
Yeah, just give me one of them and that would be whatever it is. What it means? Alarm? A lie? A lie? A lie? A lie means to make it look better. Oh, a line. A line. Alignment. So left alignment. That's an alignment. Right my essential. Well, that I don't want. Well, does it have any other interesting meaning that we could just apply to Paul and call him that for the rest of his life? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be something nice like alignment. <laughs> anyway, no, I think that's. Oh, did you remember yet? I, I have. I I remember it was zero one zero something for S etc. So I just told Paul zero one two just to see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, it works. It's crazy, dude. But then you need someone to kind of remember all these letters. Like, you know, how do you remember all these little things? Like my keyboard doesn't have, you know, um, Arabic letters on it, but I know the location of them. I never look at it. Anyway, thanks, Paul, for your participation. You know, I, I'm genuinely surprised that Microsoft hasn't added into Notepad like an ability to pull up the Unicode chart set thing because there's a little tool, isn't there, in in uh, Windows? You can just oh, type in. Is? Uh, yeah, if you whack uh, start and then type char set, char, character map. Yeah, type in CHA, and the top option that the start menu suggests to you is the character map. If you pull that up, oh, I'll, nice. I'll share that. I'll show you. Not kidding. Yeah. Uh, share, share. Oh, I Windows. see it. Character map. Here you go. That's a, so it the, gives you the numbers too, dude. Yeah, so you can pick a font. Um, Because some fonts have specific mappings as well, Mm, mm. Um, and then you pick your character. So if you wanted wanted like one of these funny A's with like Mm -hmm. a um, with a circumflex above it, as it's put, then you can use Unicode character. There you go, zero zero C two. So if you you do Alt zero zero C two, then you get one. No, 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 nope. It's Alt zero one nine four. Look at the right. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you with me? Oh jeez. You got it. It's okay. Yeah. You get you get a participation trophy. <laughs> You're the last that. winner. <laughs> yeah. I'm the last winner. I get a participation trophy. Hey Paul, how how do you feel about the new king? Oh my god, I'm gonna get you in trouble right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I I think people have a lot of like opinions on what royalty means. Uh, yeah. or, or what you know what the monarchy represents in general um i'm of the opinion that they kind of haven't really been that relevant other than as a kind of state figurehead and sort of representation of the british empire you know, but, but, in the no, wider world but wait, the Commonwealth wait. i thought the queen did enough i thought the queen elizabeth did enough relationship to bring over two billion english pounds to the united oh, kingdom God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they 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 make money for the. UK. You know when you know when they told me that she died, I felt really sad. I don't know why, but I felt really sad. You know, it's I, like the world's mother died. Something just just this overwhelming feeling of sadness. I don't know why. Yeah, a death is always sad to hear, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. To be honest, she didn't bother anyone. She didn't have trouble with anyone, did she? She just minded her own business, didn't she? She didn't even bother the UK government. <laughs> Sorry, that's too much. <laughs> and they need bothering. I mean, look at the. I mean, I thought it was bad when you lot elected Trump. Now we've got Truss. I mean, she thinks the top of her priority list right now is making sure that British apples are in European markets. It's like we're in the middle of a living crisis. And this is what you want to talk about. Well, you got a you got a new care. You got to roll back to 1945. That's that's all people cared about back then, right? Yeah, that's 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 what matters. Anyways, let's 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 pick this off, lads. See yes. now speaking your language. Let's go, lads. <laughs> lads. Okay, lads. Okay, so here's the deal, Sam, <clears throat> Sam, 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 Sam. Can we finish this uh, foundation service today, brother? Do you think that's possible? Yeah, so minutes. now we have Paul joined. I think it's yeah. okay. But he doesn't write code, though. So I think Paul is kind of wait to share. His... I, I only write disasters. I don't write code. He doesn't. He doesn't. Paul, did you try this new feature where you can have colors? Colors. 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 
Isn't that just theme settings in, in VS, or is it? No, no. You they just go here and you basically say colorize, and then you go into tabs and windows, and then you go, hey, colorize documents tabs by project or file extension. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> you want to piss you want to piss off Paul speak French. I don't know. My brook is going to come in and be like that's not French. <laughs> what you just that. said there, you've just insulted a nation. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, you'll be like Hassan with all due respect, love the standard, that's not French, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or or that wasn't the French you insulted. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually I'm actually having someone uh, a dear friend, a really really old friend of mine in England, translating the standard to British English. Yeah. So you would see, instead of auth authorization with the Z, it will yeah. be with the S. Spell it properly for a change. Proper. Nice. Spell it proper. proper. <laughs> yeah. Proper is Australian, not... not Okay. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever read the expression in it? In it? Oh my god, dude. When I lived in England, I used to, I used to say that all the time. You know, it's, good, it's, all, it? it's all good in it. Now <laughs> now in America I say you know a lot. It was like oh, oh, yeah. it's all good, you know. And then it was great, you know. I think I commented one of that, that on one of your videos because you must have said it about a thousand times in like the space of that ten minute video. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know? You know? It's disastrous. Okay, <laughs> anyway. Here's the deal, my friend. Uh, Sam, how far did we go on this? Oh, dude, we went really far. That's great. I love it. Let's see here. In the in the uh, let's see. So we have three passing tests. That's great. So this is good. So we did the validation. Oh, we just need to do the exceptions. Now the question here, Sam, is and Paul, is this expression broker? What kind of exceptions does it generate? Because that's what we want to handle and kind of localize and ca categorize. What kind of exceptions does this guy generate? And this is the one thing, Paul, this is the one thing I really envy in the Java programming language. It won't let you write a method unless you put throws and you explain all the exceptions that come out of it. It might be a little bit kind of annoying, but C Sharp doesn't have that power today. So your standard anyway is that you would wrap that in a try catch method, mm -hmm. and then in there you would catch. Um, I mean, you could gen you could catch general exceptions, and then you can catch all of the other ones that you think it might throw. The the obvious ones that stand out there are going to be pretty much any kind of compilation expression, right? Uh, a compilation exception, sorry, not expression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you're going to get anything that like just from writing a block of code or writing what you think might be like a, a link where clause or a select expression or whatever, you know, whatever the block of code is that you're trying to parse mm -hmm. there could potentially throw. So you're basically saying what kind of exception could the compiler throw? Yep. Well, that's anything, right? Yep. <laughs> so, 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 how do we find that out, Paul? The the, the source code of this stuff. If you go to source.net, you know about this website, right? Well, Roslin normally throws um, compilation exceptions. They're a specific type of express of exception. Is that how it is? Scripts. Yeah, but that's my experience of dealing with it. So you'll get back. Um, the, so the compilation express exception will have. Um, effectively the details of what you normally see in visual studio when you get an exception but what that type is that no i so know it'll say like this line of code has this problem with it mm -hmm. what type is it though it's just called a compilation exception yeah it's its own type it's a it's a subtype of exception that um i think the roslin team have created for all exceptions effectively that um, roslin throws so if you okay. search that repo or the, the Roslin repo for compilation exception, you should get a class somewhere. I'm I'm surprised actually that the that this doesn't come at the first the first result. I don't think it's open source. C scripting. Is Roslin not open source? I thought it was. Script, scripting, can you hear me? Scripting, yeah. Okay. C sharp scripting. No, it's not in the source code uh, of the C sharp uh, donut. Where is shipped, it? shipped as a NuGet package. Yeah, but we need to see the source code of it. 
You can't find it yet? I can't find it. Oh. Why is that? Is it the close source? Should we talk to the folks, the .NET folks? I can find it for you. It might be, yeah. Uh, Paradise, whatever. Here, Mike, no, micro. <laughs> <laughs> What the heck is that? <laughs> Sam, can you translate this, please? What does it say? Microsoft. Microsoft. Is that like Microsoft yes, with um... an accent? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Sam, please translate. I don't know what that means. Um, the first three card means um, this, this guy. Yeah. Male, mm -hmm. and he he loves he loves girls. <laughs> is, is that really what it is? Oh my god! I'm the a first, male. Uh, uh, six characters. Oh my um, god! This account must be. Oh my god! Go ahead, go ahead. Mm. He has a lot of books, and uh, his behavior like the gold. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he will <laughs> he will be something <laughs> blah 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 I can't uh, believe what is this account <laughs> um, his name hmm, yeah I don't know name. sorry something went yeah. wrong reload <laughs> Okay, all right. So that's funny. Uh, that got me. I really thought it was Microsoft. You should go to GitHub slash donate slash Rosling. Okay. Slash dot net slash Rosaland. Hmm. Am, am I missing wrong, something? Wrong type. R-O-S-A-O-Y-N. R-O-S? R-O-S-A-O-Y-N. R-O-S-A-O-Y-N. Gotcha. Okay. So I should think the C sharp gonna... script be here? C sharp script in this organization. They might be using it, but I don't know if this is in the it. in the SRC source photo. Mm -hmm. I think. Go to Wait. the source code. Of of the uh, of the Roslyn? The, yeah. Okay. SRC. Soft yeah script scripting scripting c sharp and here's c sharp script okay now what kind of exception is this good guy doing no exceptions why would we handle exceptions right so i know there's argument null exception so let's take that one on the side this is this is the fun part of writing any broker right if you're integrating or interfacing with an external uh library but here it's only check the code so um if we uh we call the method and before call the method we make sure we input the code we input is okay so we don't need to catch that there is no guarantee you shouldn't build like every service for itself right what if the library itself kind of broke something something upgraded and, and now it's throwing argument null exception for whatever reason okay. you shouldn't rely on that don't okay. trust anyone <laughs> defensive okay. programming yeah go to the create of create method the create method yeah oh this create method here so this guy is calling script dot create initial script hmm. now let's see where that is uh script Wait. I think it's a C-Sharp, right? Did you not find the compilation exception? C-Sharp script compiler? No, no not yet, Paul. Um, let's no. see, Sam. Let's see, let's uh, use in the... So create, there you go. Yeah, oh, I'm looking for create initial script uh, function. So this is, guys, mm -hmm. it might be in... Let me just search it like this in this that, that looks like the right repo. Can you search the repo on GitHub or do you have to download it and then no no, no I can search, search it. I can search it. I'm looking okay. for the declaration of it. There it is. Internal create there it is. And it's, it's in script. You're right, Sam. 
So here's this. Okay, so what is this guy doing? It's just saying new script. Okay. So that doesn't throw any exception other than argument null exception. Basically. Okay, uh, Sam. Sam, what are we doing after that? Like, uh, we go and call. Hold on a second. We call the. This is lock you. We do run a sync, right? So we need to see what this run a sync actually does. Run a sync. So this here, run a sync in this repository. Let's see, guys, maybe that's. Run async, run async. I want the definition, the declaration. It would be nice if they could just give us the... Oh, there will be a ton of these. Let's see if we can find it by reference, though. That would be nice. Run async. Nope. Sometimes GitHub will... Yeah, there it is. Look, look. I can find the reference like this. So definitions, there it is. But I don't know if this is the one we want. Diagnostic, diagnostic message sync message. No, that's that's a test case. Huh? Yeah, you're right. Let's go back here. I'm looking for the run async that's uh, that we do with the script. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let me go back to this one. You have you have the create function, initialize script, right? This guy is returning script, so there must be something in here that says run async. There must be. There it is. Got it. It is Sam. Um, so this is globals function. Where is the one that gives you code though? Catch exception cancellation token. There is common run async. Let's see what this is all about. It's the abstract uh, method. Really? There it is. And then there's another run async. Beautiful code. So easy to read. Love it. Love Suggestion. It. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Rather than getting bogged down in a rabbit hole, just mm. spin up a new console app, write that's, some invalid code. That's and what I usually do. <laughs> I usually do that, but sometimes it doesn't give you all the answers. But but I, but that's that's my method, what you just said. I usually yeah. just start like that. Let's do that. I'm just going to go and do that. So let me... Uh, I think I have... I think given the nature of the problem, because what we're literally talking about here is we've generated some code. We're going to give it to the compiler. What do we expect the result to be? That mm -hmm. The scope of that statement is effectively, well, anything, right? Right. So I think we probably just need to start somewhere and say, hey, what's a reasonable expectation? Like, so if we said select, um, you know, we had a basic select and we just put an invalid property name in, Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do we expect that to do? Let's start okay. there or something. Okay. Let's, let's create a quick console app. Here it is. Here. What is this? Maui. Maui. Sam, why am I Sam, getting why? a feedback? Is it you or uh, or Paul? One of you. One is feedback. One, two, three, four. Okay. It worked. Was that you, Paul? I got headphones in, mate. Sa Sam, are you on the speaker? Mm hmm are you on a speaker yeah okay you me? yeah i can hear you i i think there is a little bit of feedback though but we, we can hear you twice <laughs> <laughs> we can really hear you we can really hear you yeah we'll hear you <laughs> all right okay let's do this console app real quick let's see so there's a console app i i swear to god i had one Hey, Paul, what do you think about top-level statements? Uh, I, The way that I architect my web applications is I always have a, a top-level you know, program CS. I don't have a, you know, a class in there, although I haven't done. Um, if I'm following the standard, I have to de define a class in order to have a static main method so that you get that... Um, because you have to say you, you want a web application builder of some type program class. Mm -hmm. So it's a requirement of the testing tooling. I wish it wasn't. I wish you could just stick a program in there and it would go, yeah, I think I know what that is, you know, because it infers that there's a program CS anyway. But with, I guess, top level statements, is yeah. there? I, I don't know. 
don't quite know exactly how it works. I mean, it's not something that I'd like. I think it results in cleaner code um, in terms of what you're writing, but it re results in testing problems. So yeah, there, there's pros and cons to it, basically. <laughs> and here you go. I'm just sitting there. Okay, so so this is public, I think, static. What it wants. It wants to be static, static, static. Static and then script options. I think this script options is also a. Where does script options uh, used to come from, Sam? Script options. I think it's from uh, Angle Sharp. Let me go get it real quick. Uh, here's. Cool. Yeah, so I want the Microsoft so analysis scripting. That's right. So if I go here. And I go and say, give me this group. Oh, I need the whole group then. Okay, one sec. Let's get the whole thing. There you go. There you go. That should kind of demystify some of these. There you go. It's sad that the, the indexing on this is not working the way I want it to because... Okay, so this is static. Here's static. I'm just trying to get it to run so we can see what kind of exceptions we would get out of it. What is this? The non-generic type globals. Yeah, that's right. Here. Okay. And then the C-sharp script. I think I have it. There you go. And then data source, which I think Do we you want to share your screen? Change my, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, guys, you guys just tell me. You know, you're pairing with me. You should tell me that. Okay, and then T, data source. Thank you, Sam. Okay, here we go. All right, so I have a thing that's that's in here, and then we're going to pass something to it and then see what kind of exceptions come from the other side. So we're going to play around with these parameters, basically. Let me control MO all of this and then go and say generate expression for, I don't know, uh, public class student. Okay, and I don't know, string name or something. And then here is a student. And here is, uh, would it be dot select uh, student, student dot name. That, what would, that, that would be what we would pass to it, Sam, right? And then we can await this like this. And now why is this guy mad? Top level statement must precede them space and declarations. Of course. <laughs> All right. So I, do I put it in here? Is that? <laughs> here. there you go. Use a function before you declare it because that's how you uh, how you do it, right? So okay. So now, first of all, I just want to see if this works at all. So I'm just gonna run the app. Let's just see if it doesn't freak out in any way. And if it freaks out, that's great. That's literally what we want to do with this session. There is one compilation error exception. You're right. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. That's the guy I was talking about. So 99% of all the errors that you'll get back will be that. Your code is crap. Sort it out is basically what Roslyn's saying there. Okay. So if you get anything else, it's probably due to the execution of, in which case it's going to be a regular exception past this point. You know, at that point, you've got, got your code block and you've inserted it back into whatever the thing is that's calling our library's api right uh-huh uh-huh okay so now if i take this that's great so that's one that that we would consider to be a a critical exception because the okay this is another one innumerable string does not contain a definition of expression innumerable string where is innumerable string is coming from uh so i passed in select s s dot name and that should say, here's the select statement. So data source select expression. Okay. And that should give me a string, which I'm using in here to pass in as a script. And then I'm executing. Why does it not that, like that? So that like, should give you an expression that returns a string array, right? Or an iQueryable yeah. string. Yeah. Expand the line 2022. 20, Hmm. 
Oh, is it expecting us to have a string in here? I don't think so. We oh, need... that is, isn't that your return type? Uh, no, that's the generic type that we pass in so we can help this function know what model we're operating on. Oh, okay. So you're, you're not passing in student, though, are you? You're passing in an iQueryable student or presumably... An iQueryable of a fictitious list of students, yes. Right. What's the error message you say, sir? Yeah, the error message says... Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, I enumerable string does not contain a definition of expression. So it doesn't know... Oh, did we define it? As, oh, that's my bad. My bad. I think we defined this as iQueryable, Sam. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My bad. Yes. You can't yes. get so the... in a message it tells you everything. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so so now let's play around with this. If I pass this as an empty, like have this. you guys done um, a session on the differences between I enumerable and I queryable yet? Because the the link extensions for those are different drastically. Yes, we have not. No, we have not. Uh, so that, that might be an interesting one to, to that's practice doing, out Paul, outside I... the context of Odate or something. Um, okay, that's... Paul, you and I will do one. Yeah. We're going to cool. do it. Okay, so if I pass in nothing in here, this is this guy is going to say, oh, it's, it's cool, dude, no problem. If I pass it as null. No loveless. No exception. Uh, argument null exception, which we already have. Okay, great. Now let's just scroll around with it a little bit more. So script options. It could be null because it's uh, optional. Yeah, this can be null. So if I run this, it's not going to freak out, is it? It's an exception. Compilation error. Yes. No, no um, reference. Yeah. Right. 18. What if I screw up the the script options internally? Like, what if I go and say? Hey, dude, I'm going to take away system. If it gives me back compilation error. I think that's all we need. I think we just need these two exceptions, you know, and based on this. Oh, it's not freaking out. It's not doing anything. It'd be like, oh, OK, I don't care. That's great. Let's take away a reference that it actually needs. Control KC. But you have the uh, using string in the, in the code itself. In the code. Yeah. So you remove the function call, but you keep the code in the, in the stream. Oh, so, that's, uh, 44. that's right. Mm. That's right. See how smart Sam is? Scary, dude. <laughs> if this comes as compilation error, I think we're good, guys. OK, compilation error exception. So mm -hmm. the two exceptions I really care about then that will come out of this, and we'll consider the compilation error as critical. So that's a critical exception. The same thing goes to argument null exceptions. So all our dependency exceptions will be critical because the user doesn't really have a hand in writing this, right? They don't really have control over it. So if it's something that's breaking for one user, it's very likely that's going to be breaking for everybody. This is how we kind of determine the difference between critical and non-critical dependency exceptions. If it's across multiple users and it's not user specific, it's critical because it's damaging your system basically. Okay. Cool. So that means I can go back here into OData. I can at least get a failing test today, Sam, don't you think? Before 9 o'clock. Do you think I can get a failing test within 20 minutes? Do you think that could happen? I don't know. Last time you said that you only need uh, five minutes. Less than five minutes, brother. You know, it's, it's a joke. It's easy. Okay, let's go into... Uh, at this point in time, honestly, Sam, like... <laughs> Writing tests, I, I don't imagine writing code without writing a test file. For God's sake, I wrote a library to test drive CSS styles. I was just showing it to the Blazor community. You haven't seen this one, Paul? Sharp styles? Oh, my That's God, dude. you're just out nuts, of... man. Like, <laughs> why? Like, CSS is not... So, so just so you understand, CSS ruins your UI. You know what oh, I did? Okay. I picked up... I picked Very up... good at it, though. That's by design, I think. <laughs> it's a bit like how html ruins all your I, markup I, on your pages I, I, I know you don't like front end i'm not even gonna have this conversation <laughs> you're not gonna appreciate it whatever <laughs> anyway just to throw an idea in your head i i'm allowing blazer developers to write css in c sharp so you write c sharp 
uh, kind of uh, object and it gets turned into CSS. How cool is that? Pretty cool, huh? No? Okay, let's do this. So I need a list of things. Hi, friend! You can't hear us. Hey. Meet, meet Alice. Hey, uh, hi, hi Ali. This is my youngest. Do you call her Ali or just Alice? Alice. Alice, yeah. yeah. All the Alices that I know, I just call them Ali. It's just too much work in America saying Alice is just. Alice, have you have you watched Alice in Wonderland yet? Where do you think we got the name from? <laughs> <laughs> you should look up. Um, there's uh, the American McGee's version of Alice, which is what I think my primary. You mean the game? You mean the game? Yeah. It's yeah, scary. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, scary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. uh why 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 do people in England say hi uh Paul? What's that all about? It's just a nice thing to say. <laughs> okay, it's nice thing to say. Yeah, you say hi, don't you? Say hi. Hi. What do you think about that, Sam? Hi. Pretty cool, right? She's cute. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> uh. You trying to steal my headphones? <laughs> here's 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 one for you, Paul. You know, tell me tell me how accurate this impression. Is. <laughs> Hear this out. <laughs> and then and then and then you and you're like very close to me or whatever, whatever. What am I, your mother? <laughs> <laughs> how close is that? <laughs> that? That sounds like a like very American high school, you know. Like whatever, like oh, yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever. There's, there's a joke, like uh, it's just a video. Uh, I can't remember the name, but the yeah. uh, it's from England or from Scotland. Uh -huh. We call fish, uh, but he calls fash. 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 You know, like fash. That must be like Ireland or something. Maybe I don't fish know. Fish or not? Not not uh, It's it's fish. Not fash, <laughs> but yeah, but that's most of the time I I say dead dead as a dead. Oh yeah, you 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 drive me crazy with that. Have you noticed this, Paul? You know, Sam doesn't say oh data. He says oh date. He doesn't say data. He's... He just says date. Sam's <laughs> the man when it comes to oh data. So if he says it, it's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he literally defined the standard single handedly. It's ass. So. It's ass. <laughs> And if you believe a word I'm saying, you're crazy. <laughs> agnostics, no, we don't care about the agnostics. You know, do you know? I have some thoughts about your um try catch pattern. I oh, don't like did you see the one about tracing. Oh, you mean the the, the try catch pattern? Okay, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. so you know, inside the try catch method, you've still got a traditional try catch block. Yeah, I don't like that. I think there's something we do? can do to, to improve that as a standard pattern. Well, how do you how are you supposed to catch an exception then? I just think they're ugly as all hell. I think you should have one one catch which catches a general exception and then pass that to something which decides how to handle it. It would make that block always the same size with a single catch. But yeah. A discussion for later, I think. <laughs> Wait. Because that block inside your try catch statement always looks like a total mess and over time because it grows out because you end up with like 10 catches, right? So you want to do something like give me a function that basically goes and says, you know, uh, uh, um, I don't know, process exception. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think you could do something like have an exception handling broker and then you can say here, broker, have this exception and then it can decide what handles it. Static void process exception. And this guy will take an exception like this and it will go and say return. Oh, can we match on throw? Oh, that would make me very happy. Except uh, see, see, he's thinking. <laughs> no, no. You see? Dude, you can see? <laughs> Told you. Dude, you can do pattern match on throw. I didn't know yeah. you could do that. Exactly. If you turn that into a switch block, is this is what I was saying. 
Try this cat. is it's going ugly. on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it's only for return. You know, the pattern match for just return, and you basically go and say, if it's an object, then do blah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? C-sharp 9, right? This here. Oh, hoo -hoo. okay. Anyway, so you can go here and say. Not only that, per type, you can specify a new variable, and then you can do stuff individually with that thing. So yeah, but once it's a switch statement, it's much cleaner, nicer code, in my opinion. So translating from a horrible try catch into a switch statement just makes it that much nicer. Oh, you sucker. So yeah, I've got like this and about 50 other things that like from implementing the standard, I just went, yeah, to me? this would just be like so much nicer. Why aren't you talking to me about these things? <sighs> I've been stacked, man, and you've what been happened stacked. happened in high school, huh? Okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll literally, come... the, the, yeah. There's, there's like, we'll go, we'll go through it because it's separate to Odata stuff. But we'll go through it offline, and I'll, I'll show you some of the ideas that I've had around the standard. Just you, some of it you'll like, some of it you won't. I don't know, but some of it I will just go yeah. and say, get out. We're done. Yeah. Some, some of it you're going to do your usual and go, you British. What do you know, right? But you know. <laughs> I can't help being great, right? Oh, this is how I know you and I are going to be friends for a very long time. We fight and we come back and we talk to each other. That's Absolutely. We, you we are, have fights like the best of them. You are my British version of Joshua McCall. That's what you are. <laughs> and that's a very dear friend of mine. You don't know him. Maybe you saw him once or twice on some of my Blazer videos. But uh, he's he's a good he's a good guy. Okay, here's the deal. Task should throw critical dependency exception on generate if dependency error occurs. Is that big enough for you, Paul? I think you should add the word dependency in there a couple more times. Shut up. And spell it, and spell it two or three different ways as well. Okay, listen. Okay. <laughs> listen, listen, dude. <laughs> Come, I come wrote, on. The longer a test name is, we know the better the test is, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through our differences. <laughs> Dependency is spelled right, you boofhead. There it is, but forever along it isn't. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that's the problem. You're right. I wouldn't be offended if you were wrong. I'd be like, ah, what is he talking about? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry for being right. I can't help no, it. No, no, he's a, no, no, you're right. Okay. All right. So let's do this. So this is my dependence exception. So var failed, uh, failed, uh, O expression. O expression. What did we call uh, O expression um, uh, dependency? Dependency. Now I'm conscious about it. Depen Thanks, Paul. That's really nice. Failed O expression. I've got to give you a complex. Yeah, that's just part of the day's work for me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Expected. Expected uh, uh, O expression dependency exception. Dependency. Exception. Stop it. Your typing skills are as good as mine. In fact, they're probably better. Exception. <laughs> What's wrong with exception? Oh, exception. Okay. Exception. I went. So I went. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you piss, Paul. Just speak French enough. He will be like, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> stop it, please. Please. <laughs> I deal with enough complaints from French people. No, I don't. <laughs> Crazy business, brother. I okay, know. so here we go. Here's one. This guy will inherit from exception like a normal person. And then... Paul, do you watch any Marvel movies? All of them, mate. I, yeah, we just got watching um, Thor, Love and Thunder, the other day, because it's on Disney Plus now. So what, so what did you think about it? I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I think people are just angry about it for no reason. They'd be like, well, the joking there is over. But that's like Marvel movies. That's what Marvel movies do, you know? Yeah, I, th I think that's the thing about Marvel, isn't it? It's always had a sense of humor, right? Like, if you take Marvel movies too seriously, then you've, you're you not, like, within the spirit of Marvel, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I think this is where, like, DC goes wrong. It tries to take itself too, like, DC it's Batman told over and over again, right? And Batman's always really serious and... 
you know. PC is going to keep making the screen darker and darker. We won't even be able to see the actors anymore. They just so That'll be the ultimate version of Batman Begins. Again. 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 Batman again. Begins. Again. <laughs> and we I will love... finally know how Batman Begins. <laughs> PC fans are going to destroy you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Responsible. He's just he's just my friend. That's all. <laughs> so, so let me tell you this. Um, what was I gonna say? You made me forget, dude. Uh, yeah, I thought Christian Bale Batman was all right. You remember? I, I don't mind. I, I quite like DC stuff. I just I find that like what Marvel did was they strung together a whole bunch of origin stories and then they progressed things on and there was a story to it. You know, over the series of what thirty five movies. Whereas, like, to my mind, DC just seems to be stuck telling origin stories of, like, the same three or four characters. It doesn't seem to be moving on from that. I would love to see DC do what Marvel did with, like, phases one through three. And then the two come together. That would be really cool. Or you yeah. could do, like, a DC versus Marvel, you know. Cross, like, cross. I feel like DC has some catching up to do, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> let's see uh there you go all right what's wrong with you uh the type arguments method oh it needs a thing okay cool object okay there you go and then let's see so this is gonna do that um and now i want to go here and say uh value to ask Yeah, she's a terrorist, I tell you. Uh, yeah. This little too far. Too far. Oh, do you know what? There's, there's not an item in this house this child hasn't touched. It's truly impressive. <laughs> so generate expression, and this guy gets an O excerpt expression. So we need some O expression. Okay, some. Okay, O expression. Sam, Sam. Some O expression. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Some O expression. Create random O expression. There you go. There's some O expression that we really don't care about. And this guy returns an O expression as well. Now we need the exception. What do you think about that, Sam? Super fast, huh? Tendency exception. Await. Third. Oh, look at that! It's just it just learns me now. Like the 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 auto the copilot now knows how I write code. That's that's the point. Just push enough consistent code out there, and copilot will write it for you. <laughs> you wouldn't think it would take this much effort to throw an exception, right? That's like the one thing you want to avoid in code. Like you'd think that would be the easiest thing to produce. You mean throwing it like this? That's just it. throwing exceptions in general. Just like writing a test. Ah. Uh. Surely you could just, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I see where you're going with this, Paul Wardy. I know. Paul of Ward. Paul of Ward. <laughs> Wordster. Okay, string. Who was I talking to? Who was I was just talking to a brook about you, by the way. We we're talking about the, do you remember how you were saying you should make all your NuGet packages start with the standard? So standard dot. Uh, restful APIs, standard dot storages, exceptions, and all that. You forgot. You don't remember anything. Yeah, you you, you were talking about um, it was the it was the lake house we were talking about, weren't yep. we? And we were talking about the lake house and Neo and like all the stuff that you're doing with the standard. I think you should have like a root namespace, which is like I, you know I, my, the way, Microsoft dot the standard dot everything. You know, I'm getting I'm getting really <laughs> close on it, like you. Nice, a unifying. So that, that yeah. So, okay, Sam, guess what? I have a failing test for you. I did it in a very short period of time while talking. Yeah. That's that's a streamer sk skill set for you right there. You can now break stuff and talk, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we should give this gift to Paul. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Paul, what's gift for a long time? So it says... <laughs> So let's say, wait, it says value cannot be null, diagnosed. Oh, it's failing for the wrong reason. Okay. 
So see, this is another crazy thing. We have the we have this guy here has its own validation inside the model. And you know how I feel about models that have logic in them. That's ridiculous. So how are we going to do this? This is a mutable array. So hold on. If I cancel this just for, for a second. I think we need to take your standard approach and just rebuild Roslyn, mate. I think it's all wrong. <laughs> the, I have news for you. They're all wrong. <laughs> okay. We're all wrong. They're all wrong. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah, this guy is complaining. So we need to find a way to initialize this guy without it barfing somehow. So how is this guy doing? Immutable array. How do you even like... Immutable Do I need to like create... Oh, this is going to suck. Okay. Uh, diagnostics equal new immutable array of diagnostics. And then what? You just need a... That, has any one of you used immutable array before? Ever? <laughs> I don't think so. What, what about if you actually get it to... Th throw an exception like that and then take a copy of no you can't you have to mock the broker you don't want to actually call the actual broker son what are you doing Forgot no, no no i was just thinking take a copy of one that was already been produced and then have a look at it and then sort of say okay what do we need to do in order to produce one of those yeah great because clearly just defining a new one is not good enough right we've got to do something else and this guy is abstract paul damn it how do we do this? Beautiful. Maybe there's a stat method on Tanego. Yeah, there you go. You're right. Don't, don't you just love open source, closed source code? <laughs> getting us. Just can't trouble. get into it, can you? Just getting us in trouble. That's all that you're doing. Any box is abstract. Huh? To be fair, the, the Rosling mock... guys have got a tough job here. Any box is abstract. Let's try, Sam. That might be an idea. No, I mean mock the. Uh... I know, I know. List. I'm trying. I'm trying. Compilation exception mock. New <laughs> mock. Compilation exception. What then? Just say dot object on it. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's that's Sam for you right there. That's his brain. That's, yeah. I told you he's a genius. He invented OData. He's the man. He didn't invent OData. There, there was no Oasis involvement. It was all him. He was there behind the scenes from day one. I type of. Yeah. Type of mock. So I mean, mock the diagonal. So you create a, a, mute, a mutable array. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Sounds good. We are at time. Ah, uh, so maybe mock I. Mock a diagonal. So we call add, right? Yeah, new mock. You, you can't mock the immutable array? Probably not. I don't know. We'll see. So this is diagnostics. I'm going to put it in here and let's run this guy. Come on. Give me something good. Come on. Don't, sit, don't, send me out. don't send me out on a Tuesday. Yeah. Here we go. Nope. I'll play around with it a little. You know, I know there is also a way where we actually instantiate. Have I have I showed you guys this way? We kind of instantiate kind of SQL exceptions, you know, the same way. SQL exceptions are uh, abstract. And an idea that just comes to mind to instantiate a SQL exception is to basically go and say, like, literally, if you go anywhere across uh, OSSS, for instance, you'll see that we'll go and do something like this. Uh, foundations, assignments uh tests watch this this is how this is how i instantiate an abstract class get an initialized object and that should be initialized yeah it's for abstract classes how does that work then does it I have, not get you an instance i have i have no idea how it works something that i found out how to do 50 million years ago Yonks ago, like the British would say, yonks ago. Is and... this one of these like black magic areas where you can kind of like do a thing that you technically don't do in the compiler and then it yeah. just figures it out later? Yeah, I don't know. Magic. I don't know if <laughs> I, to be honest with you, Paul, like I don't know if I don't even know. 
I don't know, man. It's weird. Like if I go here and say, give me this, it's, what is it? The diagnostics is the, would that even work? Let's see. Here it is. And this guy's that with yeah. the um, compiler exception. Oh, by the way, this guy. Okay. Hold on. So let me just run this. By the way, add gives you a new array, and that's why this guy's freaking out. Ooh, weirdo. Weird, weird. Okay, so if I run like this... Oh, it would do, because it's immutable, right? Yes. Yeah, still the wrong error. See? So it doesn't like the fact that... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm doing this all wrong, guys. Uh, I need to put this in here. Is anyone else weirded out by the fact that there's this object that's referred to as an array and it has an add function? Mm -hmm. Like that makes no sense to me. Mm. Why would you ever add anything to an array? Yeah, C cannot create abstract class. It just doesn't know how to do it. So, mm -hmm. so that's a fun problem. Anyway, I'll I'll look into it and I should have a test ready. But this is a a great stopping point. Thank you both. You for... told me you should finish the finish test within. Five minutes. I failed. I failed you. <laughs> I failed you miserably. He's just not got your skills, Sam. That's all it is. I'm not good at it. We'll, we'll teach him. Don't worry. We'll all get right. there. All right, guys. I love you both. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you all. Thank, thanks everyone watching us. And Sam, Friday, Thursday. Where do you? Where, when do you want to meet next? Friday. Uh, 8 a.m. Um, maybe 10. 10. Okay, I'll check with you at 10. Paul, try to hang out with us more. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. See, you, see you, Paul, 10, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends if this standard thing keeps getting in my way. Yikes. Just... Later. Bye.